Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to share with you 10 eyeshadow palettes that released in 2019. I'm going to give you a roundup of my thoughts of all these palettes. Some of them I've reviewed on my channel, some of them I've never mentioned on my channel. But I want to give you guys my thoughts after having them for a few months and how they compare to each other. That way you guys can see like what are my favorites, what are my least favorites. So if you guys are interested in hearing my thoughts on 10 different eyeshadow palettes that came out this year, then just keep on watching. All right, so let's start off with a palette that came out around the beginning of February, and this is the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded Palette. This is a $44 palette. This is probably like the seventh palette in the Naked series. Basically, the Naked palettes are the Harry Potter of eyeshadow. They are just going to keep making palettes until the end of time. They're like the now CDs of eyeshadow, basically. And essentially, this is the original Naked palette, but just a little bit more upgraded, a little bit more modernized with the color schemes. I think that when the original Naked palette came out back in, what, like 2010, maybe? Um, very more cool tone shadows, really more in, more like smokier tones, more grays, more just cool tone browns were a lot trendier and definitely in the past couple of years warm tones have been really in so this is kind of the warmer version of the original naked palette what disappointed me with this palette is that while they upgraded the shades they didn't really really upgrade the formula i would say it's a little bit more like smooth a little creamier but it's definitely not at the same level as some other Urban Decay palettes, especially one that I'm gonna mention next. I feel like these are completely different brands. So the pros are definitely that this palette has a really, really great variety. You have some good transition shades, you have a lot of different shimmers, and then the cons would be that within that variety, you're only gonna get so much variety with your eyeshadow looks because the colors are a little bit softer, more muted. Um, they don't really stand out, they don't really pop on the eyes that much. So if you like really um, natural, more minimal, day-to-day -day eyeshadow, totally easier to use, create different looks with this palette. But like I can't get this intensity with this. It's going to be a lot softer with this palette, and that's what disappointed me. Definitely beginner-friendly, but if you want bolder eyeshadow looks, even in the neutral family, this is not going to be the palette for you. So keep that in mind. Definitely beginner-friendly. Definitely going to be a favorite for some people but not me. <laughs> I just think if you're gonna redo something, a palette that started the palette craze and eyeshadows in the last like decade, you better make this palette brilliant. Like it could have been done so much better. So I had really high expectations and it didn't really meet them. Next up, we have another Urban Decay palette. This one is humongous. This is $65. The packaging is the biggest letdown with this for sure. This is the size of your encyclopedia. Um, but the inside is fairly portable-ish or easy to use, just like to have on your vanity. I've never traveled with this palette. I don't really get out much, honestly, so it doesn't really matter. But this is awesome, actually. Like, the quality of this palette is amazing. I honestly wouldn't even think these are the same brands. Not to say that this is, like, horrendous, but this is so, so, so good that it just doesn't make sense to me that... A month later after releasing this that you're gonna get the amazing quality of this palette so love the urban decay game of thrones palette i've never seen an episode of game of thrones and i love this palette so i'm sure if you guys are game of thrones fans you would definitely love this palette i don't understand all the references in here but at least the colors the formulas everything about this palette is super amazing if you like like very warm tones more foiled, very shimmery shades. I'm just gonna go ahead and swatch them so you guys can see how freaking fantastic. These shimmers are absolutely fantastic. All of them in this palette, super buttery, super creamy, amazing, amazing shades. Um, biggest letdown for sure is this whole situation, but it's honestly like pretty easy to use. It's not like a big deal. I don't like having this big bulk in my collection, but otherwise the palette is totally, totally worth it. And if it wasn't worth it, I would end up decluttering this because this is huge, but amazing, amazing formula. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it, but that is $65. It's currently sold out on the Urban Decay website, but it is available on Ulta. All right, so next up, I got this palette from Too Faced a few months ago. I was not planning on purchasing it at all. It wasn't really on my radar, but this is the Pretty Mess palette from Too Faced in collaboration with Erica Jane. I believe she is on one of the Housewife shows. I have no idea. I don't have cable. I've never seen it. But anyways, here is the palette, and this like stresses me out. I don't like the layout of it at all. Um, the palette is just fine. It's a $42 palette. 
like I can't really say anything negative because the formula is just fine but that's all it is basically this palette is the equivalent of a B minus like it's not bad but that's the best thing I could say about it is that it's not bad the formula is just fine you do get some pressed glitters and just some shimmery shades this is like one of the glitter shades in the palette but Nothing we've never seen before. It does kind of remind me of the formula of the Naked um, Reloaded palette where it's not going to give you like super like pigmented foiled shades, but it's not anything that's like off either. And then I don't really necessarily like the shades in here. I find that some of these shades just don't personally work on my complexion, but also they're just like more muted and shades that can get a little bit muddy once you start blending. So with this one, I would say it's not bad, but it's not good enough that you should run out and purchase for sure. Next up, ooh, this one you should go ahead and purchase for sure. This one is $45. ABH Riviera, I love Anastasia eyeshadow palettes. I did not buy the Alyssa Edwards eyeshadow palette because I felt like this was uh, more up my alley for a colorful palette. This has a lot of color, but it's also colors that are a bit more wearable if you're not used to doing like neon looks or um, something super, super out there like a Urban Decay Electric palette or something because the shades in here, especially the shimmers, some of them can pull a little bit more neutral, like some of the purpley shades and the pink shades can pull a little bit more neutral. They're not so bold. Like you can definitely wear any of these shades with some like warm brown shadows or peach shadows or anything like that, that it can just be kind of like a soft pop of color or a wash of color. And it doesn't necessarily need to be an incredibly bold eyeshadow look, but of course you can do that with all the shades in this palette as well so i feel like this is a very very versatile colorful palette because you can play with how much color you want in this palette and it's just like a very fun like summery palette for sure really really like the shades in here especially the shimmer shades i usually mix um this palette with the anastasia norvina palette if i want to kind of tone down the colors and i want to use more of like softer um crease shades i'll go in with some of the shimmers in here but Definitely recommend this if you're not a huge fan of color, but you want to start out with adding some color to your collection. I would definitely recommend this palette. The formula is beautiful. The shades blend really easily. And I also like that it's not, um, none of the matte shadows are like too heavy. Like you can definitely just get like a soft wash of color. It doesn't need to be like super, super intense pigmentation right off the bat. So I feel like this is a bit more beginner friendly than some other really colorful palettes. So if you like color, check this one out for sure. I don't think you'll be disappointed with that. Next up, we're going to talk about a few affordable palettes. So in the beginning of the year, Physicians Formula came out with some butter eyeshadow palettes. They might have actually released these right like around December 31st. I think I purchased it around like December 30th and then I reviewed it in the beginning of January. So we're going to go hang and pretend this came out like January 1st. Um, so this is one of two of them. I did declutter the other one and I will probably end up decluttering this one. This is a $17.99 palette. It is pretty pricey for a drugstore palette, honestly. There are other affordable palettes I'm going to mention today that I would definitely recommend more. So this is a little bit pricier, and here you do get some shimmers and some matte shades. If you guys watched my review video when this first came out, I had the weirdest experience with this green shade. Basically, whenever I would apply this shade specifically, out of all the shades in the palette, whenever I would apply this shade, I would get like a weird staining on my eye. And it was just because I was using a makeup remover to um, remove this shadow. So whenever I removed that shadow with a oil-based makeup remover product, it would end up staining my eyelids or staining my hands. So that was very strange. Um, but other than that, the overall formula is pretty good. I think that if you got this palette, you would enjoy it. But because I have other palettes that are affordable in my collection that I like more, this one doesn't really like stand out to me. It does have that same like coconutty scent as the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, Butter Blush, and Highlighter. Um, but I prefer all of those face products way more than this specifically. I do think that the mattes and everything, like all the shades blend out really nicely, but there's nothing super, super exciting about this, especially because some of the shimmers you have in here are just kind of like standard shadows. You can even see where I swatched um, the green shadow. I just took it off with a paper towel and some Bioderma, which doesn't have oil in it, and it still stained my finger red. That was definitely a downside, and to me, 
the green shade in here is like the most exciting shade in this palette and I was having issues whenever I would try to remove it because it would end up staining. So overall the formula is just fine in this palette. I think the mattes blend out beautifully. The shimmers are just fine. They're nothing special. Um, and for $18, there's a lot better out there for sure. So you won't be disappointed if you purchase this, but you can get a lot better for $18. All right, so let's talk about a drugstore palette that I definitely prefer. And this is the e.l.f. New Classics palette. This is an awesome 18 pan neutral palette. These 18 pan palettes from e.l.f. are really, really awesome. The formula so pretty in this palette. The formula isn't like Anastasia where it's super bold and foiled but the shimmers in here really do stand out. They look super, super soft on my hand. I picked out like the most subtle shades, but just trust me, when you do apply the shimmers on your eye, they actually do pop out. You don't have to like really, really pack them on or build them up or anything. Um, these are really, really pretty shades. Just an overall neutral palette. You have some cool tones, warm tones, neutrals, and then you have a ton of matte transition shades. I do find that the mattes are pretty pigmented and easy to blend as well. So if you want a really affordable neutral palette, you're not gonna get that foiled look, but if you want like an everyday palette that's easy to use, that's gonna be long wearing throughout the day, definitely check this out for $14. All right, so next up we're getting into a bolder, more affordable palette. This I just reviewed recently, ColourPop California Love. This is so good. To think that these two palettes are the same price, it's like night and day, because the formula, like I would pay 40 bucks for this palette. Um, easily because the formula is so good. The quality of every single shadow in here is amazing. If you want an affordable palette that's really gonna pop, you're gonna get that foiled look, you're gonna get a lot of pigmentation. You can really, really build up these shadows to make, you don't even need to really like work to build them up, but you can get very intense looks with these shadows without a lot of effort. So I love that about this palette and you can also get very wearable day to day. Like I've been doing like two minute eye looks with this palette for the last two weeks. Also more intense eye looks with this palette. You do have like a glitter in here. You have a bunch of different formulas. This shade is my favorite in here. You get a lot of creamy shadows. Definitely a very, very warm palette. Just look at the pigmentation on some of those matte shades. All the mattes you can layer together. You can wear any of the shimmers with any of the matte shades. I think you would definitely get a lot of wear out of this if this is like the color schemes that you prefer. So I want to backpedal for one second because I realized I never showed like any swatches of Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. So here are just a few of the shimmer shades. That is what they look like. You can tell that they're pretty shadows, pretty shimmer shades, um, but it's nothing you've never seen before for sure. So just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a closer look of some of the shades from the Urban Decay Naked Reloaded palette because I realized I started swatching every single palette after that, but that's just some of the middle shades in this palette. They look totally fine. They look pretty on the eyes, um, but it's, it's really just nothing we've never seen before. All right, so next up we have the Tan Lines palette from Jouer. This is a $34 palette inside. You have nine shades and a mirror. Definitely like very summery tones. You have some warm shades and then you have some greens, some blues, some more colorful shades in here. What's interesting with this palette is you do get some different textures with the shimmer shades. This shade, sure thing, this is basically like a cream eyeshadow and then some of these other shimmers are all different textures. These are basically like pressed foiled shadows and this is more of like a shimmery, just a normal shimmer shade. So here are the shimmers in the palette. They are nicely pigmented, especially the dark blue shade. To me, that like makes the entire palette. It makes it worth it because it's Shade is so pretty. It's like a duochrome shade. You can definitely tell it's like green, purple, and blue. All at the same time, super pigmented, super easy to use. You don't really need to like build the um, shimmer shades up too much. The mattes blend out nicely. I haven't really, I never used these two shades because I never ever wear yellow or lime green, but the rest of the palette, definitely easy to use for sure. I do like that it has some more unique colors to it. And I think that the price point is definitely good as well. I will say that while the quality is good, it's definitely not like the best thing I've ever tried in the world. Um, but what makes me like this palette is just that it has those different textures of the shimmer shades and that this color scheme, I don't find to have other palettes like this in my collection. It's usually like all warm or all blue. So the textures and the colors definitely make this palette a bit more unique for me. I have decluttered other Jouer palettes in the past because I haven't found that the shimmers really stand out. They're not 
as pigmented as I want them to be, but I do find that the shimmers in here are a bit better than previous palettes, especially because they're more creamy and foiled for sure. And overall, I definitely think it's a fun palette for summer. I feel like this is also pretty beginner friendly, very easy to use and create different looks with this palette especially for the price point as well. All right, so next up, this was a recent review as well. This is the Natasha Denona Sunrise Palette for $65. And I'm so excited about Natasha Denona having more um, mini palettes and palettes this size. I hope that she releases more palettes of this size because it is smaller than obviously the large $129 palette. I definitely think that the price point is so much better. $65 is still expensive, but it's definitely not $129 or $249, you know, it's not a car payment for an eyeshadow palette. So love the packaging, love the color scheme in here. The thing about this palette is that there are different textures within the shimmer shapes. Some of them are um, shadows that you do need to use with a pressed glitter or apply them very specifically to get them to really pop and show up, especially this shade, which is a gorgeous color. You definitely need to use a glitter glue with that shadow to really make it pop. So here are a couple of the shimmers, really, really beautiful shades in this palette. This is gonna be a gorgeous palette, especially for fall. Another thing that you need to consider with this palette is that some of the matte shades you need to be a little bit more careful with, especially the darker tones. They are a little um, too powdery, so you have to use a very precise brush. So with the Sunrise palette, you can definitely get amazing looks. You get a lot of variety, a lot of variety with the mattes and the shimmers, um, but it is not a palette. If you only have five minutes to do your makeup, don't reach for this palette because your eyeshadow will probably end up muddy or you're just not gonna be happy with it. Definitely recommend that palette, but just keep in mind if you don't like to spend a lot of time on your eyeshadow, be too precise while you're applying your eyeshadow, that palette is gonna give you a bit more trouble. All right, so lastly, number 10 is a new palette from Lorac, and I feel like I have not used anything from Lorac in a really, really long time. I used to buy the Mega Pro palettes, and then I realized I don't like giant palettes. They stress me out just looking at all the colors, but this is definitely a lot more sleek compact this is $29 very affordable really great packaging it also does have a mirror inside and this is the neon lights palette this is a really awesome bold palette kind of reminds me of the color scheme of the Alyssa Edwards ABH palette I believe and I do have a recent tutorial on my Instagram using some of the blue shades in here really really easy to use very pigmented palette definitely a lot of bold color in this palette but still very easy to use I don't see myself wearing like every single shade in here. I never really play with yellows or too many like neon pink shades, but it's a good thing to have in your collection if you do want to start incorporating them. And it's a nice formula for those shadows. And then this shade in here, Party, is basically like a shadow topper. I know that Anastasia has um, similar shades like this in some palettes. I know the Subculture palette had a shade like this, basically just like a chunky glittery shade, but whenever you put it on top of one of the other shades, it can make it look like more duochrome and give it like a nice pop as well. So if you're into more bold, colorful shades, um, bolder than the Riviera palette. This is like basically like electric neon shades. That's why it's called neon lights. Um, then definitely check this out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And I like that it is definitely a more affordable palette for $29. I think you have like all of the bold shades that you would need as well. For me, definitely not a palette that I would play with day to day. I normally wear my eyeshadow like this on a daily basis. But if you love color, I think you would really enjoy that palette. It's a really great formula. All right, so those are all 10 eyeshadow palettes. I'd love to know your favorites and least favorites in the comments below or if there are any other eyeshadow palettes that I didn't mention today that are your favorites right now let me know those as well and that's going to be everything for today's video if you guys liked it make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and I'll talk to you guys soon in my next video thank you so much for watching bye